Hi, I'm Martha Wilson, the founding director of Franklin Furnace, an alternative space in New York. I'm going to discuss where I believe the alternative space movement came from. This is the Fondazione e Manifesto del Futurismo. I don't speak Italian, you can probably tell that. Um, I place the origin of the alternative space movement in the publication of the first Futurist Manifesto. This was in 1909. It was on the front page of Le Figaro, the French um, paper of record of the day. Uh, this is not the front page of, of Le Figaro. This is the manifesto version of the same text. Um, about a year after the first Futurist Manifesto was published, this document was published. This is the French version of the manifesto that came to be known as Against Passeist Venice, in which the Futurists, the poets and painters who were part of the Italian Futurist uh, group, proposed that Venice, because Venice worships the past, and only the future will have value, Venice should be allowed to float into the Adriatic Sea and sink. Uh, so they, they went to the top of the clock tower above Piazza San Marco. Uh, it was a Sunday, 1910. We're uh, waiting for the faithful to emerge from church. The Venetians start to come out of church into the Piazza San Marco. The futurist poets and painters start to throw the 800,000 copies of this manifesto off the top of the clock tower into the uh, piazza below. The Venetian townspeople pick up this manifesto. It basically says Venice worships the past and therefore should be, you know, is, is not valid and relevant at all and only the future will have value. And, and they became angry. They became angry. And so they ran up the clock tower. The futurist poets and painters ran down the clock tower. And in the, in the stairwell, there was a a fist fight, a physical confrontation. And in this moment, this physical confrontation, I believe the animating ideas of the alternative space movement were born. Uh, one of these animating ideas that's particularly important is that art is not for just the kings and the popes. It's also for the regular people, the hoi polloi, the masses. Art is Art ideas are for the regular public, uh, and really that any space can be used as art space, and in this case, uh, a stairwell. And uh, um, those ideas are often confrontational, but we'll, we'll, we'll leave that discussion for another day. Now we are 70 years later, we're in Lower Manhattan. Jenny Holzer's truisms are in the front window of Franklin Furnace. This was uh, my living loft in the back and Franklin Furnace lived in the front. Uh, it's a 10 foot high photostat. Somebody drove by Franklin Furnace, which was on Franklin Street, and threw a bolt through the phrase, through the truism, boredom makes you do crazy things. So Mike Gleer, uh, Jenny Holzer's husband, is up on the ladder taking a picture of the whole in the plate glass before we took down the truisms and uh, moved on. Um, at, at the time that Jenny Holzer's truisms were exhibited, the, the text as an image was a radical thought and artists were making things called artist books. I, I, I hate this term. I hate this term, artist books. It's, you know, it's wrong. The reason it's wrong is that books when you hear the word book, you think of an art history textbook which contains text and images of things outside the book. In this case, this is a book by Klaus Oldenburg, uh, his Ray Gun poems. Uh, you can see that it's done on really cheap paper. It's done on a stencil machine. Um, you kind of use a blunt instrument to cut through the gel, and then it goes on a drum. Uh, this were cheaply produced um, during the Vietnam 
era. He he gave people money so they could buy them, and they, you know, they would basically throw them in the trash. They didn't have value. Um, they ended up being probably the most valuable works that were contributed later to the Museum of Modern Art, uh, forming uh, the largest collection of artist books in the United States and the Museum of Modern Art collection were joined together in the Museum of Modern Art artist book, Franklin Furness artist book collection. Um, we were exhibiting artist books. We were exhibiting um, Ida Applebrug, for example, uh, did a whole bunch of, of books. Each one of these books is called A Performance. She understood that the, the work of art exists as an interactive object. It, it exists between the reader of the book who's turning the pages and ingesting the idea uh, and the audience and the artist who has created the, the book. The audience and the artist are joined here in the place where the image and the text intersect. Um, we, this is a book too. This is Daniel Martinez's um, Obscene Is. It's a set of condoms. We also started to show the history of the book as an art medium because we realized that nobody else was doing this in New York and, and, uh, and the history was long and storied. Um, and uh, perhaps the artist book is, is where intermedia got started, where the image and the text overlapped uh, in this image, you can see Guillaume Palinaire's visual poem, which we stenciled directly on the wall. Um, he's using the words as images um, to show that the contemporary artist book movement didn't just pop out of a vacuum, that it had a long history. Um, these are visual poems by Lizitsky and Mayakovsky in which the intonation with which you're supposed to speak the poem is indicated by the size of the typography on the page. And then there's a visual uh, catalog along the right so you can find the poem based on, on the image. Marcel Duchamp's uh, La Marie Mise à Nu par ses Célibataires, Mem, 1934. Uh, the Large Glass uh, also was published, the notes to, the, to making the large class was published as an edition. And so uh, there's a bride, you can see the bride in this uh, copy of the bride stripped bare. Um, somebody, some poor person had to rip the bride out of um, pieces of vellum paper so that the notes to the large class could be reproduced for this edition. Um, the, the, the whole notion that the the page could be an art space spread immediately all over Europe. Um, Bulletin Dada, you can see that the title takes up half of the, half of the magazine. Um, so Franklin Furness was exhibiting artist books, what came to be known as performance art and installation work. All of this work was or often this work was politically engaged. And once upon a time, an artist asked me, this is an um, uh, artist call against US intervention in Central America show. Um, there's a citywide movement among artists who were protesting the American government's uh, engagement in Central America. So the artist said, well, does my work have to be political to be shown at Franklin Furnace? We have, we have no policy like that, but we select the work through peer panel review, where we invite artists to get, come together uh, and look at the proposals we've received from around the world and pick the show for the next uh, year. 